Evo. Just solve the generator for one rotor position and of course as you know a generator won't produce any sort of power output unless it's rotated. So to simulate that we'll do a parametric run where we will rotate the permanent magnet rotor. So we begin by turning parametrics on and then opening the parametric setup dialog box and we'll create a rotation parametric. We select geometry rotation and we'll call it angle for the rotor angle. Now this will be a 21 step rotation and we'll select the permanent magnet region as the region that rotates and remember that when we created the generator the center of the circles is at x equals 10 y equals 50 so that has to be the reference point for the rotation of the rotor. That will also be important when we're calculating the torque and we'll rotate it through one half cycle. We'll rotate it from 0 to 180 degrees. I click on Apply Create and opening up the loop view we can see that we do have that parameter defined. Looking at the table view those 21 steps for 180 degree rotation you're rotating 9 degrees every step. Now so far we haven't defined any post-processing and the two things we're most interested in in this generator is the open circuit voltage and also how much torque it uh, takes from the external prime mover to rotate the rotor. So we'll calculate those using the analysis menu. First we'll calculate the torque on a region and we'll select the rotor and then right click to end the selection. You notice it says locate or enter the torque point. That's the same point as the point of rotation, 10 and 50 and now that appears in our post-processing. In order to calculate the voltage, we can't do that directly, but the parametric run will calculate the flux linkage. And after we have the flux linkage, we'll differentiate that in the last part of this demonstration in order to calculate the voltage waveform. So we'll select analysis, flux linkage, and region. And select the return. And finally, let's just validate the parametric. Let's make sure that everything's gonna rotate properly. Okay, we finished setting up our parametric run, and now we'll return to normal mode and run the parametric. First, we'll save this as into a new folder called Angle Parametric. And we'll call that Parametric Defined again. Now we're ready to run the parametric. And for the results file, call it angle results. Now as you can see, at each step the solver refines the mesh and calculates the torque and flux linkage. Our parametric analysis is now completed, so now we'll analyze the results. We'll open the parametric angle results file, and then open the final parametric results table. And you notice again, it's recorded what happened during the parametric, the 9 degree rotation each step, also the torque calculation on the rotor, and the flux linkage. First we'll do a graph of the torque. And you can see that initially the torque is zero. That's because the rotor is exactly aligned with the stator and it's a minimum reluctance position. Now as you try and turn the rotor in the counterclockwise direction, it experiences a negative torque because it wants to return to that alignment. And this increases to a maximum. And then you pass a point where now the rotor is, the torque is decreasing and finally you reach an unstable equilibrium point where the rotor could go either way if you push it further then the rotor gets pulled into the next alignment point. Okay, so that's how the torque performs. I'm going to just delete this because I don't want to confuse the flux linkage results. Now we'll plot the flux linkage. And you can see how the flux linkage it starts off at a negative value maximum and decreases when the rotor is at an angle of 90 degrees, it's zero, and then the flux linkage becomes positive. Now the important thing is the derivative of the flux linkage. 
This would be the shape of the voltage waveform. In order to calculate what the actual voltage would be, you would have to multiply by the number of turns in the coil and by uh, the coil speed. But the voltage would have this waveform. And that completes our analysis of the permanent magnet generator.